E como mai? Welcome from Hawaii Island, Hawaii, at Hawaiian Sanctuary and Mile Marker 12 Farms, where we're focused on permaculture and practicing completing the circle between the sun, plant, and our bellies. David, I, I practice studying Hawaiian medicine for almost 20 years. I specialize in local plants as medicines, Hawaiian plants as medicines, and I specialize in weeds. And um, I have a, a clinical practice in Makawao. I practice acupuncture, herbs, massage, diet. I teach Qigong. I teach some martial arts. I do a lot of body work. Um, but, but plant medicine is my, my main love. When I first got here, nobody would teach me um, Hawaiian medicine. When I first came to Hawaii, I was already a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist. And nobody would teach me Hawaiian medicine because of my Caucasian upholstery. Right? Nobody would teach me. And I was fortunate enough to meet a man named Kyoki Susa, who then introduced me to his teachers, his Hawaiian teachers. And they kind of took me under their wing. And um, I spent eight years studying with Papa Kalakea and, um, and various, he was my main teacher and various other teachers, including Kaipo Kaniakua. But one day I was, I was out, I had my books and I was out looking at plants. We were out in Kulupalaku on Maui. Oh no. And the, I was, I was looking at these plants and Uncle Bill Kanikoa came up to me and he said, you know, you might want to stop telling those plants who they are start listening to them. I was like, wow. And, and then he walked away, right? <laughs> and that, that really shifted for me. That was about 15 years ago. That really shifted things for me. And I started watching him very carefully when he was, when he would gather plants. And I, um, I started watching all my Hawaiian teachers and I started putting pieces together from different cultures, which is what I do. I aggregate information. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to talk to you today about um, about using both sides of your brain, okay, when, when, when gathering plants. I know a lot of you guys want a lot of data, and we'll do, we'll cover data, you'll get more data than you can stand, okay? But I also want to, I want to offer you the opportunity, like that, okay, just using a, a different part of your brain using a part of your brain that, actually using it consciously, we use it every day, part of our nervous system. And Hawaiian plant gathering practices actively engage parts of our nervous system that allow us to, act, I believe, access information from plants. Um, so, you want to, I, I believe that we have to use both halves of our brain while practicing medicine. If it's just scientific, or if it's, or if it's just linear, scientific, or it's just non-linear or shamanic, we're not doing ourselves, we're doing ourselves a disservice. So I really believe in using both halves of the brain. So when I teach my students, I teach them how to listen to plants, how to develop a personal relationship with plants, but also how to do research, how to go onto the internet, how to, how to look at a scientific study to see if it, if, you know, where the holes are in it and things like that. Because if we're going to really use this medicine and this aina in a way that's healthy, we have to do things differently. And for me, that means using both halves of our brain. These gathering practices are not, um, these aren't written in stone, okay? These are, these are just guidelines. For me, the really important thing when you're gathering plants is that you are respectful and you're treating them as equal. 
when we go out and we gather plants, like I just did, I just gathered some some hila hila and some loa'e. I took the lives of those plants. I have to do that with a certain level of respect and a certain level of awareness. And my mission, my personal mission, is to bring the sacred back into whatever medicine that I practice. So I'm going to teach you some gathering practices. We're going to go over some gathering protocols. The important piece of it is that there's a, set, there's a container of the sacred around what you're doing. It's not just take off the trash and feed the cat, right? There's <coughs> something that's different. And the level, of, the level that you're working with on how serious the condition is will depend on how sacred it needs to become. The Hawaiians typically, um, and other cultures do this also, I believe, gather with the right hand for a man, left hand for a woman. For a man, west for a woman. When I do it, I face north. If it's a small plant, you're just going to gather. Oh, by the way, um, there's something I call MSU, making stuff up. Okay? This is not Hawaiian. This is MSU. This is stuff that David made up. Okay? The, the, the increase in the, the amount of sacred attention that you put on something. This is just how I do it. That means I, I will never present something as Hawaiian that I do not believe to be Hawaiian, that I'm just making up off the top of my head. My Hawaiian teachers would often gather early in the morning. Um, Uncle Harry would gather <coughs> before, he would go out before the birds were made. Now you need, if you're going to do that, right, you need to know where you're going. Right? You don't want to be walking off the cliff or into, into brambles or something. So, but he would, he would scout out an area, then he would um, get up really early, like three in the morning, and do his pule, his prayer, and then go out and gather. Um, I, I like to sleep in usually, and unless somebody's either very sick or died, I usually don't get up that early. My Hawaiian teachers, most of them would gather before, or at least before the sun was high. The idea is that the mana, the power of the plants, was in the plant earlier in the morning. I have a specific gathering bundle that I make, which is MSU. This is something that I do because I get tired of carrying Walmart bags around me in the woods, right? When I was gathering herbs or, or you know chunks of plastic, so I created a gathering bundle. This would this this type of thing was used for, for as a gift for lays and traditional Hawaiian culture. Some Hawaiians don't cut, don't use metal on plants, particularly tea plants, but I do. Okay, so if I'm gathering for a man. I will cut with my left hand, I'll gather with my right, and I'll put it in the bundle, the bundles of my belt. Cut, and for a woman the other way. Now the Hawaiians wouldn't gather, they gathered for one person at a time. When I had a clinic over here in Pahoa, I would gather for my clinic, so I would use both hands. And again, this isn't written in stone, this is about creating a sacred space around something and then honoring the gifts that were given so that we don't forget. Um, in Islam, they say that's why they pray five times a day, because it's so easy for us humans to forget. Right? So this is what my gathering bundle looks like. Again, this is MSU. Making stuff up. Oh, there you go. That's a mo'o. A, that's called ho'ailona, which is an omen. That's a ho'ailona. Mo'o is very sacred. And then the question is, what is the ho'ike? What is the the meaning of the of the whole or of the only? I don't know. Could be positive. Could be negative. Mm -hmm. He's gonna watch the class. He's gonna watch the class. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll take this these tea leaves like this and I'll fold this up. And again, this is MSU. This is just how I do it. And in Pune, I always wash these very carefully, right? So. I'm just going to give you a rough idea of this. Uh, this part is edible, the central part. And um, they actually make a kolihau, which is a white lightning out of, out of this. And there's no slugs that far down in the plant, so I'm safe. Now, this is a gathering bundle. What I'll do is I'll take the brown leaves. If they're, if they're too tannish, they, 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 they crinkle. If they're too yellow, they're not flexible enough, so you want to use the dried brown leaves in a certain stage. And I'll take this and I'll I'll tie this around and I'll put this in in my belt with a backpack. And then I will make a little lua here, a little hole, a little puka, and I will stuff the herbs in there. 
and I will tie it off. I will keep tying it off as it gets bigger and bigger. And sometimes if I'm making for a patient, I will think about that specific patient. I'll think about the patient. I'll think about what order, you know, if this is a specific order, if I'm being really esoteric, the really specific order I want them to, to cook the herbs in. I might go out and gather this first, and that's what they'll cook last. I'll work backwards from there, but that's a, um, and so it looks kind of like, when you're done, it looks like a big uh, joint, right? And it's tied on. Then what I'll do is I'll, I'll give that to the patient with the herbs in it. And, well, I'm not going to do this now because it would make a mess. Then what I will have the patient do is cut all the leaves off of this. And what you're left is this stem, right? And they'll take that stem and I'll instruct them to take just the stem part and to put this in the ground where they're going to see it every day. And the idea is that I've made them, I've given, I've made them something that tastes horrible. They're going to actually drink it, hopefully. They're sick. They're committed to their healing. And every day when they see this plant, because this plant will grow, and this is the most sacred Hawaiian plant, if they see this every day unconsciously, they're going to remember their commitment to their own healing and my commitment to their own healing because I went out and got all banged up and they were brave enough to put this stuff in their mouth, right? And that hopefully will help speed the healing process. So that's how I that's how I do the healing bundle. And you're more than welcome to steal that or modify it as you like. We're gonna go over a bunch of, we're gonna do an herb walk. We're gonna go over a bunch of plants. Just just learn one or two or three and just start using them. You don't, you don't have to, I'm, I'm going to give you more stuff than you're going to want to hear. Okay? Don't worry about it. It's in my book. Buy the book. You know? But uh, if you just get one or two things and you start using them, you start, you'll develop a relationship with that plan. And pretty soon you'll look something up and you'll check something on the web and then, you know, that's a really good way to start. That's using a left brain linear way. My apprentices, when they've been studying with me for a long time, they'll start washing their bodies. And, and that, we'll, we'll talk about that more later too, but there's a way of dropping into um, what the Hawaiians call the na'au, which is the belly or guts. And there's a way of activating, I believe there's a way of activating the nervous system so we can gather data from plants. But it's, it's an art that's been lost. I mean, they do it in South America, the shamans do it. It's not magic, it's not woo. I mean, dogs do it all the time, right? Dogs, cats, elephants, monkeys, chimps, gorillas, they all use plants as food and medicine. They know what to eat and what not to eat. They've proven that all those animals use plants as medicine. How do they know? They're using a part of their nervous system. We have the same almost identical nervous 